With the RTX 5090 now here, there's been a lot of discussion around custom AIB models, with brands introducing new cooling technologies and design tweaks to push performance further. One of the more intriguing options comes from Gigabyte with the Aorus RTX 5090 Master Ice, a card that not only brings a unique frosted white aesthetic to the mix, but also packs some serious cooling innovation. Given that Nvidia's Founders Edition has gone the route of a more compact dual slot design, we wanted to see if Gigabyte's larger triple slot cooler and custom engineering could offer tangible benefits over the FE model. So today we'll be putting it through its paces. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. <sighs> I'm never going to be an esports gamer. I never get any kills. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Is that Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com? Yes, my son. It is me, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. What are you doing here? I'm here to bestow upon you a gift that will transform you into a true gamer. With a 24.5 inch full HD screen, 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.5 millisecond response time, AMD FreeSync Premium, and height adjustability, you'll be gaming in the big leagues in no time. Oh, thank you. No problem, my son. Why don't you check out the link in the description below to find out more. So before we jump right in, let me start by saying that this is still an RTX 5090, and we've already taken a look at the Founders card from Nvidia. That means we won't be retreading old ground when it comes to what a GB202 400 GPU can actually do, as well, we already know what it's capable of. However, we will be testing a range of games to ensure that performance aligns with where it should be. And being an OC branded card, we should actually see a slight uplift over Nvidia's FE model anyway. Now, when it comes to custom AIB cards, the focus shifts towards design, cooling performance, extra features, and factory overclocks. In this case of the Aorus Master Ice, Gigabyte has gone with a boost clock of 2,655 megahertz, which is a 248 megahertz higher clock than the Founders Edition, coming in at 2,407 boost, equating to a 10.3% increase. That should, in theory, translate to higher sustained performance, but we'll need to test it to see if that claim holds up, because well, we've seen it before, where cards come in with these beefier clocks, but that doesn't actually translate to real-world performance, and is let down by its cooler. Though in this case, I doubt we have that problem, as the cooler actually looks pretty damn beefy. So, what does the Aorus Master Ice bring to the table that we haven't seen already? Well, the standout feature is its upgraded Windforce cooling system with Hawk fans, which Gigabyte claims enhances airflow and reduces noise levels compared to conventional fan designs. The cooler itself is a triple setup with enlarged heat sinks and an upgraded vapor chamber that makes direct contact with the GPU die. Gigabyte states that the fans, with their unique blade design that's inspired by the aerodynamics of an eagle's wing, results in up to a 53.6% increase in air pressure and a 12.5% increase in air volume, all while not affecting noise levels. Now, we generally see claims like this quite a lot with different GPUs, and obviously we'll be showcasing how the cooler performs, but it's worth remembering that well, we have no way of actually comparing those claims to a 5090 with a previous gen cooler. It's just not possible, so we kind of have to take it with a pinch of salt. Now, one of the more unique elements is the ice white aesthetic, something that will appeal to those looking to build a clean all white system. Gigabyte has opted for a metal backplate with an integrated RGB logo, along with an RGB logo on the side next to the LCD screen. And quite a subtle RGB strip going the length of the card. And of course, the fans have a single RGB LED to give that some RGB love too. Now, as you'd expect, it's all customizable via RGB Fusion, but it's nice to have some RGB everywhere that no matter the orientation in your case, you're bound to see something. Now, another interesting feature that Gigabyte highlights is the LCD Edge View screen. This small display on the side of the card allows users to monitor real-time GPU stats like temperature, clock speed, and fan RPM. And you can even upload custom animations, GIFs, or text, making it a fun addition to those who like to personalize their setup. While it's not a groundbreaking feature, it's a nice touch that adds a bit of flair and something that I don't think we've seen enough of on cards anymore, with well, the only real notable brands being Galax with their Hof cards and Colorful with their iGame Vulcan range, but they're kind of more of a bolt-on kind of solution, so I actually prefer this. Now, size-wise, this card is a beast. The Founders Edition might be a compact two-slot design, but the Aorus Master Ice goes in the complete opposite direction, measuring 360 millimeters in length, 150 millimeters in height, and 75 millimeters thick, making it an almost four-slot card, and actually comes in slightly bigger than the Asus Astral, which is pretty impressive, and is significantly larger than Nvidia's FE model. 
Weight-wise, it comes in just over 3.1 kilos on its own and a slightly heavier 3.2 kilo with the included fan. So while it's heavy, it's slightly more manageable than some of the bulkier AIB cards that we've tested, but it's also a testament to the quality. At least that's how I generally see heavier cards. Heavy normally means better built, but of course that isn't always the case. Now, because of its size and weight, Gigabyte do include a reinforced metal support bracket in the box, which is somewhat of a necessity at this point for any high-end GPU. And the stand portion of that makes contact with the case and is also magnetic, which helps keep it in place too. The card also features a dual BIOS switch, allowing users to toggle between an OC mode for maximum performance and a silent mode that prioritizes quieter operation. Now, one of the more interesting additions to this card is the included 120mm reverse fan, which can be placed on top of the GPU to further enhance cooling. Now, unlike standard case fans, this reverse fan is designed to pull air away from the card's heatsink, optimizing airflow for better thermal efficiency, while still giving you the very best view of the RGB lighting. This is an approach that we have seen the likes of Azus take with their Astral card, which features a full fan on the rear to help dissipate heat more effectively. By comparison, NVIDIA's Founders Edition relies on a dual push fan system, which is effective, but doesn't have the same level of direct airflow enhancement. This additional fan could prove to be a game changer for those looking to extract every ounce of performance from their GPU while maintaining lower temperatures. This is especially crucial for anyone looking to overclock, as lower thermal loads often translate to better sustained boost clocks over time. However, it is worth noting that installation of the extra fan may require some extra space inside your system, so clearance is definitely something worth looking at if you're working with a more compact build. The other thing, which I kind of feel is a bit of an oversight, is, well, there's no fan header on the graphics card. If you're going to include an extra fan, maybe there should be somewhere to actually plug it in, and instead you have to route the cable around and put it into your motherboard. And I don't know, it just kind of takes away from the clean aesthetics. Now, when it comes to power, Gigabyte sticks with a 12 volt 2x6 connector rated for 600 watts, though the 5090 GPU is rated at 575 watts. So it's gonna be interesting to see how much the Gigabyte Aorus card uses, as the FE managed to hover around 550 during our tests, though the Astral was closer to the 575 mark. Now, as always, a big factor in any GPU purchase is gonna be price. The RTX 5090 already sits at the ultra premium tier, and custom models like this, well, they don't come cheap. While pricing varies region by region, expect this to cost anywhere from 10 to 20% more than the FE model, depending on availability. Whether that extra investment is worth it comes down to factors like cooling efficiency and aesthetics. Now, talking about sort of performance, to test, we used our GPU test bench with an AMD Ryzen 7, 9800X3D, 32 gig of Corsair Vengeance RGB 6000 MHz CL30 memory, and a Gigabyte B650E Aorus Master motherboard. All testing was conducted on the latest Windows build with the latest NVIDIA drivers. And given the target audience for a card like this, our focus today is on 4K gaming performance. Again, just to make sure that things align with how the Founders card performed. So with that all out the way, let's get into those glorious benchmarks. Kicking things off with a Plague Tale, and it's here where the Aorus Master ISO C demonstrates a modest performance boost compared to the Founders Edition, with a 1% increase in average FPS, which does fall within margin of error and is negligible in real world use. However, when compared to the master with the added fan, we do see a 2% uplift in average FPS, which is again within margin of error and suggests that the additional fan doesn't provide any tangible performance benefits. While the ROG Astral OC edges out the master by 2%, this too is within margin of error, and the 1% lows remain largely consistent across the board, reinforcing that these differences have minimal impact on the overall gameplay experience. In Black Myth Wukong, the Aorus Master showcases its capabilities with a 7% improvement in the averages over the Founders Edition, so a noteworthy uplift that solidifies its position at the top. However, when comparing the Master to itself with the added fan, the performance difference is negligible and actually drops, albeit by 1%, which is again well within margin of error. The same can be said for its comparison to the ROG Astral OC, which also falls within a 1% margin of error too. But what is nice to see from our results though is that across all configurations, the 1% lows remain consistent, so the card does perform exactly where expected. In Cyberpunk 2077, the Aorus Master delivers the same average frame rate with or without the added fan, reaching 102 FPS. This confirms that installing the extra fan doesn't result in any measurable performance gains, at least in terms of frames per second. Now, when compared to the Founders Edition, however, the Master achieves a 9% uplift in average FPS, so the overclock is clearly doing its work, while the ROG Astral OC trails by 4%, a difference that just falls within margin of error. Now, the 1% lows all come in within the same remit, showing that even though the averages fluctuated, the 1% lows, again, remain consistent. In Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, the Aorus Master leads the pack, delivering an average FPS of 133. 
The addition of the fan on the master results in a marginal drop to 132 FPS, so falling within margin of error yet again and showing no tangible benefit to performance. The Aorus Master and the ROG Astral both deliver identical average frame rates in the averages, showing that no performance difference between the two. However, the Founders Edition lags behind at 126 FPS, resulting in a 5% deficit compared to the Master. In Starfield, the Aorus Master leads with a solid 125 average FPS, outperforming the Founders Edition by 9%. And in the extra fan to the master results in a negligible drop to 123 frames per second, which, as you may have guessed, falls within margin of error and has no noticeable impact, while the ROG Astral matches the master with the fan installed at 123 FPS, showing no advantage in average performance. Interestingly, the 1% lows mirror the averages closely, with the master holding a slight edge at 107 FPS compared to 104 FPS on the Founders Edition and 106 FPS for the Astral. Moving on to ray tracing, and in Black Myth Wukong with ray tracing set to medium, the Aorus Master performs at the top of the stack, delivering 53 FPS on average, which is an 8% improvement over the Founders Edition, which sits at 49 frames per second. When compared to the Master with the added fan, performance is identical, showing again that the fan doesn't lend itself any extra performance in terms of frame rates. Compared to the ROG Astral, which trails slightly behind the Master, delivering 52 FPS, the Aorus Master should be the cheaper of the two cards, so this is, well, a good result for Gigabyte with strong performance, even if it's only by a small margin. In Cyberpunk 2077, with ray tracing set to Ultra, the Aorus Master leads a pack with 45 FPS in the averages, and 34 FPS on the 1% lows, matching the average performance of the Founders card, but actually coming in with lower 1% lows, though we are only talking a few frames per second, so nothing of concern, and matching pretty evenly with the Astral card and the Master with that extra fan installed, which, throughout our testing, hasn't really helped at all. So performance is strong, but for the most part, there really isn't a lot in it. The Aorus Master does sit on top periodically, but we're talking about small margins. Though it was obvious that, well, this was going to be the case coming into this review, as generally always is the case. Instead, the bigger focus is always going to be on the cooler and what that's able to offer up. So as always, to see what levels of performance we get from the cooling solution, we ran F124 for an hour-long loop to simulate a sustained gaming session to see what that means for temperatures, clock speed, fan speed, and power usage. It's here where the Eurus Master, and with the included fan installed, maintained an average GPU temperature of 70 degrees C, so slightly cooler than the Founders Edition at 71 degrees C. Memory junction temperatures followed a similar trend with the Aorus models averaging 70 to 71 degrees compared to the founders 72 degrees, highlighting slightly better thermal efficiency in the custom cooled cards, even if by a very small margin. Fan speeds are close across the board with the Aorus averaging 1620 RPM and the included fan bringing that down slightly to 1600 RPM because having an extra fan meant that the three fans that are pre-installed didn't have to work as hard. Though in both scenarios, this is still more than the Founders Edition at 1575 RPM, but is so minor that you'd never notice the difference from an audible standpoint anyway. In terms of GPU clock speed, the Aorus Master significantly outperformed the Founders Edition with an average clock speed of 2820 megahertz peaking at 2850 and dipping to around 2760 megahertz, while the Founders Edition lagged behind, averaging 2550. This was all while the Aorus Master kept GPU usage high, averaging 96%, and power consumption is of course notably higher on the Aorus Master, averaging 590 watts and peaking at an astonishing 606 watts in places. And for the sake of comparison, the Founders Edition comes in more power efficient, averaging 540 watts with a peak of 550 watts. So, I'm a little bit torn with the Aorus Master. When I first laid eyes on it, I think I might have actually fallen in love, just a little bit. We actually built a PC the other day in the Valkyrie VK02 case, and well, this would have been perfect inside, matching the theme and adding another element of lighting. But in typical fashion, we were about a week too early to make it happen. Visually, the Aorus Master Ice looks amazing with its frosted white aesthetics and customizable RGB lighting. The LCD Edge View screen also just adds that extra touch of personalization, letting you monitor stats or display your favorite animations. Now, while these features don't affect performance, they do enhance the overall user experience and make the cards stand out for those focused on building a visually pleasing system. However, the card's size and weight are definitely worth considering as, well, it's near a four slot design and over three kilos in weight. So I think what I'm trying to say is it may require careful planning for installation and long-term support in your case. Now it does deliver superior clock speeds and slightly better cooling, but at the cost of higher power consumption. And ultimately these improvements just 
don't translate to a significant uplift in gaming performance. It consistently sits at the top of our stack in our tests, but the margins are just often small enough to fall within the realm of margin of error, especially when compared to the Founders Edition or even the ROG Astral. That said, the Master does shine in specific areas, like its sustained clock speeds under load, and its slightly lower temperatures, making it a good option for those who want a premium card that can handle extended gaming sessions with ease. And of course, if you're looking for a white card, well, it ticks the box too. Now, the cooler itself is impressive, with Gigabyte's upgraded Windforce design keeping temperatures under control, even during our hour-long loop of F124. The addition of the optional fan, it, it helps to alleviate some thermal load on the main cooling system, but the difference in temperature and fan speeds are just minor at best, making it hard to justify as a game-changing feature. From an acoustic perspective, the card is whisper quiet, and while the fan speeds are slightly higher than the Founders Edition, the noise levels just remained barely noticeable. There was nothing really in it. However, the power consumption is where the Aorus Master starts to show its downside. Averaging 590 watts and peaking at 606 watts, it's notably less efficient than the Founders Edition, which remains below 550 watts. While this higher power draw does allow it to sustain higher clock speeds, it also makes it I guess less appealing for users who are concerned about energy efficiency, or those looking to avoid upgrading their power supply. Though I guess if you're already prepared for your GPU to pull 550 watts, what's another 50 watts in the grand scheme of things, right? Now, you're probably wondering what happened to the overclocks. Obviously, this card does come pre-factory overclocked, and normally we would look at seeing how far we could push it ourselves. But sadly, I'm actually filming this on the day where well, the card's getting picked up and we just didn't get enough time. We had this card for a little over 24 hours and including our F1 test and the gaming test and actually forming this content. Well, yeah, we just didn't have time to do any overclocking, but hopefully we can get this card back and we can look at sort of how far we can actually push it along with comparisons against other 5090 base cards and how far they can go. At the end of the day, the Aorus Master is a well-engineered card that delivers on its promise of premium features and performance. Still though, the improvements it brings over the Founders Edition are relatively minor for most users. But if you're the type of enthusiast who wants the best cooling and the ability to push your GPU to its limits, then yeah, the master delivers. But for the average gamer, the Founders Edition offers a more practical balance of performance, efficiency, and cost, while still providing an exceptional gaming experience. To wrap things up, if you're the type of user who values aesthetics, cooling innovation, and slightly better sustained performances over pure practicality, then, well, yeah, it's a fantastic showcase of what Gigabyte are able to do. But at $2,499 on Newegg right now, well, even though it's out of stock, it's a big step up from a card that is already $2,000 and way above most people's budgets. But much like with the power, when I mentioned, what's another 50 watts? You could say the same thing about price as, what's another $500? Though I think that's probably a bit of a bigger battle that you have to have with yourself. But yeah, if you want a white card, ta-da. For now, that's going to do it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, then consider supporting us through the super special secret Patreon club. You'll get access to a whole host of cool goodies, including behind the scenes content, bi-weekly game nights, exclusive access to a lot more of our testing data, and so much more. The link is, as always, down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.